I mean, I was listening to it with my head in my hands. I just kind of believe he's gotten it so wrong. It's clear he doesn't understand what's happening. They don't have a grip of the issue. It's incompetent. And I think it's time the Prime Minister stepped in that. Why did you have your head in your hands? Uh, the announcements he's made, he was very careful. Um, it's all smoke and mirrors. He's very careful to keep the announcement to the word cladding. But a lot of the issues affecting most of the flat owners are around fire safety defects. So nothing in that announcement helps you around waking watchers. It doesn't help you around um, it, the excessive insurance premiums or the fire safety defects. They're actually um, the root cause of the problem in a lot of these buildings. But if the cladding was able to be removed on those buildings that are more than 18 metres, does that not go some significant way to helping those residents in the buildings? Um, no, because the um, on those buildings over 18 metres, we estimate about 12,000 of them, and um, we think it's going to cost about £15 billion to actually fix those issues, not the £5 billion that's being offered. Uh, it's been three and a half years since Grenfell, nearly four, and we've seen how slow the rollout actually is. Um, you've then got um, pushing 100,000 buildings that are between 11 metres and 18 metres, and then we've got buildings under 11 metres, and we've got no idea how, what the numbers of those are. There'll be hundreds of thousands. When you talk about the Prime Minister stepping in, what do you mean by that? I think Number 10 has got to step in and get a grip of this issue. There's estimated up to 11 million people affected in this country with this issue at the moment, and the government's actually caused the problem. Back in January 2020, we changed the guidance. Um, the Secretary of State did change the guidance, um, consolidated the vice notes, and in that guidance, it specifically stated that this applied to all buildings of any height previously it only applied to buildings above 18 metres. And that's why your previous call was talking about mm. um, EWS one forms. And the RICS who designed the EWS one form specifically stated it's only designed for buildings above 18 metres. I have to say, it doesn't sound like you've got much trust then in Robert Jenrick to try and sort this out. And not at all. I mean, I never tried to go personal. I always tried to keep it on the policy. But the problem is there is incompetence. Now, I said um, later last year inside the chamber too, we needed to get out of his ivory tower, stop talking and start helping people. And we've just got to push on. We've got to help people. It's not good enough. I mean, I, I do. I, I, I realise you don't want to make it personal, but given your lack of trust in him and the incompetence you say he has displayed, do you think that he's the right man to carry on in this job? And the problem is, if you say they're not, well, then they'll keep them in the job just to show that they can. So I want to help these soldiers. I don't want to get involved in personalities. I want to fix the policy and I want to keep hold of I want to help these soldiers. But if he stays in the job, you don't think he's the right man for the job, even if he stays in it, clearly. Well, I mean, there's issues there, but also there's ministers beneath them. Um, there's the housing minister as well. Um, my view is helping these soldiers and I just want to keep it on helping these soldiers. And you're a Conservative MP. <laughs> I mean, it's quite. It's, I'm just struck, Mr. McParland, by the uh, anger that you're displaying towards your own government about the level of incompetence, as you describe it. Well, um, the government's done a lot of brilliant things um, over the years, um, but unfortunately, on this particular issue, we've let people down. And I've got an amendment to the fire safety bill, which is signed by 39 of my Conservative colleagues, as well as the other parties, and that's why I'm trying to ensure that leaseholders do not have to pay. How would you? So the res the resolution for you then is spend fifteen to eighteen billion pounds in just removing the cladding. No, because cladding is only a small part of this issue. Fire safety defects are a huge part of the issue. So how much is it all going to cost then? If if the government is to deal with all of this, how much would that cost? Uh, the estimates are in excess of thirty billion pounds. Part of the thirty is billion. Yeah, part of the problem, I mean, if you look at the G15, which is just the largest housing associations in London, they're going to be paying £3 billion out on afford um, making their property safe over the next 10 years, which they equate will result in 58,000 fewer affordable homes for Londoners because of this issue. So there is a massive knock-on effect. We've got huge problems, and it all stems from incompetence when it comes to having changed that guidance back in January 2020 and not got a grip of the situation. We've got to get a grip of this. We've got to help those leaseholders.